Het is poe, het is poe, het is poe. Heru na ver, heru na ver. Glad to be with you today. It is a gorgeous day. It is about 48 degrees where I am. It is wonderfully brisk. Fortunately, no breeze. We had quite a bit of rain, so it'll be a uh, Abbreviated session today, really focus. It's new moon, excuse me, full moon today. So hopefully you've been out under the full moon if it hasn't been in clement weather where you are. And if not, you know, just getting those vibes inside. But it's important to go ahead and get them in. You know, last night, tonight, all the way through the seventh, get out under the full moon. Also, you know, to share a happy Western New Year, festive Western New Year to those of you that celebrate that. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to get into a SAR stance. We're going to get into the all over body check in as we usually do to start the day off, the Qigong. And today, we're going to begin again our walk through the Qigong sets that we typically do as a way to give you a little more insight into how they can be used what they can be used for, and in doing so, to aid you in understanding why they're important to what we do in terms of not only of self-defense, but also of health and healing and longevity. So we'll get to that today, and then after we do the Qigong and then do some explanation and background into them, we will also get into the short form and then, well, the lunar form, the lunar cycle portion of the form and then the short form. And then we'll end up with the uh, wisdom from the sages of the ages and Shasha at the end. Hopefully that gets it in for everybody. It should be efficient, should be tight. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. So if y'all are ready to go, like I'm ready to go, let's get it in. Parallel shoulder width. Again, feet parallel shoulders width. Be a good place to start our shasha. So we'll go ahead and we'll bow in to all the masters that have gone before us. We bow. Teacher to student, student to teacher. Then we get into Ruchi. Now that we're here at Wu Chi, pyramid hands. And we're going to shift the weight. We're going to step to either feet parallel again for a side stance or a little wider than shoulders width, sit down into the side stance. Twelve breaths as usual.
Agreement hands. And back into Wuchi. Grab the hands, shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right, feet parallel, shoulders width, hands up. We're going to shift the weight and we're going to rotate the right toes, the left toes, excuse me. Draw a circle, take it the other direction. Place it down on the heel. Wiggle the toes. Wiggle the big toe by itself. Start with the big toe, working your way down, second toe, middle, all the way to the pinky toe. I right, place that foot flat. Now we're going to raise the right. Now I'm doing it this way so you can see my foot easier. And then change direction. Place it down on its heel. Wiggle the toes. Big toe. Work your way down. All the way to the pinky toe. Okay. So the feet, shoulders width, bring the hands down. Work the shoulder. Get as much extension as you can. Draw a circle with the shoulder. And take it to the front. And the other shoulder. And the other direction. All right. Left hand. Other direction. And we're not going to go in depth on the all over body check in because we've got a separate video already on the all over body check in. So don't worry, you can go check that on the YouTube channel. Wiggle the fingers one at a time. Where we talked about the importance of why we do the all over body check in, changing hands and begin. And for those of you who may be your first time, with just a quick review, it's a way to check in with the joints. It's a way to aid in the consistent development of our neuroplasticity. It's a way to repair and renew and engage the neural networks to the extremities in terms of gross motor function and then also fine motor function. Here we are with the fine motor function on the fingers here. And Doing the same thing with the toes, so we build a brand new relationship as a way to really rapidly understand what's happening with the body. All right, so bring that down. Now we're going to rotate the head, working the neck and shoulder muscles, starting to the left and the right. Using as much range of motion as you can get. Listening to your body. So looking over this left shoulder, taking the chin down and up while looking over the left shoulder to the best of your ability. Looking over the right shoulder, chin up and down.
front of the center. Chin down and up. Around in a circle. All right, take the head the opposite direction. On your next in-breath, bring the head back to front and center. Excellent. Now let's shake it out. Opposite hand, opposite leg. Nice work. Feet parallel, shoulders width. Okay, so you're gonna sink down as we start with the gathering. We'll come in here and exhale. Into the chest and then out. It's almost like we're doing a version of the brush stroke. It's underneath, in and out, okay. The movement here is a variation on rabbit through the chute. For those that may have a differing set of range of motion and flexibility to get all the way behind the kidneys with the arms. So we have an adaptation, not an adaptation, just a different Qigong that opens the body up in a different way. So we've gone into detail on the Iron Shirt Qigong, again, on another video. You can check that. So today, we're going to talk about the gathering while we're doing it. Go ahead. But the design is that we're moving slowly, and you can feel the energy moving all around as you're bringing in the fresh air, expelling the bad. This is a full motion circulating the energy through the whole body. It's designed so you get the pumping action with the legs, syncopated with the breath and movement of the arms. And as we're doing our bellows breathing, it enables you to get full deep breaths, oxygenate the system, as well as work on the flexibility and range of motion of shoulders. Okay, so this is the last one. Bring it down and shake it out. You should feel that in your deltoids, as well as long knee thighs when you do it that long. Okay, very important for the body that we get there. You know, in class, we do it in an abbreviated form because we want to be able to get all these things in during our session. So if you're at home, you want to be able to do these in a way that gives you a few times, okay? So now, unless I tell you specifically how many times to do it, but this is one you can do for, you know, minute, five minutes. The gathering is a good one for extended time or so if you want to clear your nostrils or you want something that's a little more aerobic without being taxing on the limbs. Okay, excellent. So now from here, we're going to do, I think we've done this before, but we're going to get into it because we're talking abbreviated today. So what we call the Ka position. All right, and what this is designed to do is to basically simulate a receptive position. And so here, we're here, shoulders width, got all these right angles with the body almost like a tuning fork energy so that you're able to receive the energy of the universe here is open, all right? And so with that, we're gonna breathe two breaths. And the goal is to do your bellows breathing. Palms facing forward, same thing. 
This is a receptive posture. Usually done facing the sun. And we're going to shift into the do opposition. Also, usually done facing the sun. Four breaths here. All right, we come back, drop the hands, shake it out. Opposite hand, opposite leg. Good, good. I'm going to shift our field of view a little bit. So you can see the legs a little better. All right. So now that we've done those, what we're going to do is swinging arms. I know we've done it before, but you're going to come up on the balls of the foot. Okay, so what I want you to see is you're up on the ball of the foot, and then it's back. This is the action of the feet. This is one of the things that we got from Dr. George Love and the Blue Dragon Immortal Qigong series. All right. He shared with us, and he shared with all of you. He's available. Please check out his work. He is magnificent. He is a wonderful elder and has been good to us. And so if you get an opportunity to work in or study with him, and you should, well, I'm not going <laughs> to here to extol his virtues. Glad you're here with us. I really appreciate it if you check him out. But he's an amazing gentleman. Amazing gentleman. Does work all over the world. Consults all over the world. Qigong, acupuncture. You want to holler at him if you get an opportunity or if you're in the area to go to one of his drumming or Tai Chi Qigong sessions. Or check him out on Instagram or YouTube as well. Okay? You'll feel good and you'll thank yourself. So from now... It's up, and then it's back, up, and back, up, and back. Okay, so y'all, and so we're going to do that full range of motion in, in real time. You ready? Here we go. We're going to do a few, and then I'm going to splay it. All right, let's stop and let them swing. Okay, there are two rivers that run in the body in the kind of the ancient way of looking at the body. You have a red river and a white river. The red river is the blood, has its own pump. It's the heart. The white river, which is can also be called the body's sewage system, is the river that gets rid of it, but it does not have a pump, okay? And so that river, and it actually is white, you know, when you see the fluids, you know, it's the lymph system. And so in that lymph system where it hits all the different organs and parts of the body, this movement is designed to move with the flow of the body and the blood and gravity to get the body moving, get the blood moving, to stimulate the immune system. And this rocking back and forth across the metatarsal and across the foot is a Qigong way of stimulating the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, we've done some yogic ways before in terms of how we do it with the kneeling. This is a different way to do it while we're standing. Want you to be able to understand there's more than one way to do things, depending on where your body is, can determine which one you want to do. Okay. This is an excellent all over body exercise that you want to do to get yourself moving. I recommend it highly, highly, highly every day, and you get better with it. So from there, whew, we'll come back to this last one and because we're at the start of the Western New Year, it'll give you an opportunity. We did this very briefly last, at the end of uh, the last session. So we'll do it today. Then we'll get into the lunar cycle, the form, and we'll get to the rest of the session for today. What I want you to think about is when we come into sunrises over the mountain and we get right here, 
This is where I'd like you to place your arms right here. We're going to breathe in. We're going to do it four times. And so as you exhale, instead of exhaling through the nostrils, I want you to have, since the jaws are already lightly clenched, you do hum on the way out. So it's mm -hmm. And if it's a little challenging to do right now, let me talk about it. Come back later and watch the video so you can get it. But the hands are going to be here. You're going to inhale. Then you're going to hum out through. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is to pay attention closely to where you feel the vibration and the tingling in your body. Mm -hmm. And you let the arms down. You do that four times in a row. And that's one of the reasons why we have like a Tai Chi journal or a martial arts journal. So you can write down what you feel, where you feel it, whether it's in here, just the head and the neck. You know, and I'm just guessing, you know, where some folks may feel it. And we'll come back. You know, she can share on social media. You can send me an email or contact us on any of our social media about where you're feeling it. And if you have questions about where or why you feel different places, and we can talk about this tangible, measurable, repeatable impact and what it's connected to. So we've done a SAR stance, and that's the other one that we have a whole separate video on a SAR stance. We have a little companion pamphlet coming out later this year talking about a SAR stance and its importance to the way we do Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong. So we'll be sharing that as the year goes on. So we weren't going to get too heavy into that. So now, as promised, let's get our feet into straight and parallel. And let's get into this lunar cycle of the short form. Sinking down, sun rises. All right, we shake it out. All right, feet parallel. And now we're ready to get it in short form. Everybody ready? All right, feet parallel, shoulders with. Exhale, sink it down. All right, let's have a seat. We'll get to the wisdom from the sages of the ages. I know normally we go over simple kneeling right now. 
and we get into that and simple push-ups where we'd be doing our nine. So what I'm going to do today is to have you promise me that you're going to practice those while we're together, while we're apart, let me say, so that once we finish up here, you'll be able to do your kneeling, your breathing with the kneeling, and your simple push-ups all the way to nine. And then our next session, we'll actually go over and review the simple push-up. And what we'll talk about is, because once we get to nine, we should potentially be able to do a standard push-up, at least one. So what we're going to do is we're going to just see how the body's feeling. Check that out. We'll tomorrow on our next session, we'll get that as we're working up to build up the body's strength to be able to do the yoga, the temple yoga that I have taught. And that requires a very strong upper and lower body thighs. And so we've been working all this time over the pandemic to build the body so that we have the strength to get that in. So I'm going to get to the wisdom from the sages of the ages. And we're going to switch up a little bit today so that we have and are able to do and get what we need done. Okay. So for starters, the essence of Tai Chi Chuan, the literary tradition, and it's from the five character secret. We'll talk about internal force, the complete chin, complete internal force, okay? So the internal force of the whole body through practice becomes one unit. Distinguish clearly between substantial and insubstantial. To fajin or to discharge, it is necessary to have root. So the internal force starts from the foot, is commanded by the waist, and manifested in the fingers, and discharged through the spine and back. One must completely raise the spirit or pay attention at the moment when the opponent's internal force is just about to manifest, but has not yet been released. My internal force has then already met theirs, not late, not early. It's like using a leather tender to start a fire or like a fountain gushing forth. In going forward or stepping back, there is not even the slightest disorder. In the curve, seek the straight, store, then discharge. Then you are able to follow your hands and achieve a beneficial result. This is called borrowing force to strike the opponent or using four ounces to deflect a thousand pounds. So, and that sounds nice and poetic, but it's really talking about how to effectively use the techniques and practices to defend yourself. And in doing so, that aids in your longevity. Here we go with the, the teaching. So, Hotel. Let's see, where is it? Oh, finger slipped off the page. There we go. Follow your heart as long as you live. Do no more than is required. Do not shorten the time of follow the heart, since that offends the ka, your living spirit soul. Don't waste time on daily cares over and beyond providing for your household. When wealth finally comes, then follow your heart. Wealth does no good if you're glum. And from the Tao Te Ching, the harm of greed. The reason why the people are starving is that the officials eat their taxes too much. That's why the people are starving. The reason why the people are difficult to rule is that the authorities resort to interference. That's why the people are difficult to rule. The reason why the people make light of death 
is that they are too eager for high living. That's why the people make light of death. Those who have nothing to make life pleasurable are worthier than those who value high living. And we got one last one we're going to run with the prophet today, Khalil Gibran. All right. And the poet said, speak to us of beauty. And he answered, where shall you seek beauty? And how shall you find her unless she herself be your way and your guide? And how shall you speak of her except she be the weaver of your speech? The aggrieved and the injured say beauty is kind and gentle. Like a young mother, half shy of her own glory, she walks among us. And the passionate say, nay, beauty is a thing of might and dread. Like the tempest, she shakes the earth beneath us, beneath us and the sky above us. The tired and the weary say, Beauty is of soft whisperings. She speaks in our spirit. Her voice yields to our silences like a faint light that quivers in fear of the shadow. But the restless say, we have heard her shouting among the mountains. And with her cries came the sound of hoofs and the beating of wings and the roaring of lions. At night, the watchmen of the city say, beauty shall rise with the dawn from the east. And at noontide, the toilers and the wayfarers say, we have seen her leaning over the earth from the windows of the sunset. In winter, say the snowbound, she shall come with the spring leaping upon the hills. And in the summer heat, the reapers say, we have seen her dancing with the autumn leaves, and we saw a drift of snow in her hair. All these things have you said of beauty, yet in truth, you spoke not of her, but of needs unsatisfied. Be and beauty is not a need, but an ecstasy. It is not a mouth thirsting, nor an empty hand stretched forth, but rather a heart inflamed and a soul enchanted. It is not the image you would see, nor the song you would hear, but rather an image you see, though you close your eyes, and a song you hear, though you shut your ears. It is not the sap within the furrowed bark, nor a wing attached to a claw, but rather a garden forever in bloom and a flock of angels forever in flight. O oh, people, beauty is life when life unveils her holy face. But your life and the veil Beauty is eternity, gazing at itself in a mirror. And you are eternity. And you are the mirror. So with that, I thank you. Your attention, your participation, and your presence. For the gift it represents. Practice, practice. We have an opportunity to get out under the moon another couple of nights, check it out, try it out, do your very best. This is that, I know the first was the first Sunday, but we're going to do it more than likely this Sunday. But we're going to go over cycles and times in a little more depth in one of our Sundays with Sabah, so you can get a real feel for I talk about the moon and the full moon being four days or the solstice cycle being five days. And so the goal is to just offer some context and some depth in a very conversational way. We're doing that this weekend. Appreciate y'all. Let's bow out. Let me say to all the masters that have gone before us, we bow. Teacher to student, student to teacher, Ashe. <sighs> Ankh Uja Samer Tatapu Amen Ray Nasut Nacher, Rachin Ray Nabin Ankh Heruna Fair. Good day, Tatapu. Peace to you. Ankh Uja Samer, life, health, and strength to you. Look forward to seeing you the next session. Remember, we want to move in concert with the cosmos. 
if you do anything in this Western year, according to these particular Westerners, ideals and struggles and move towards the new, make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. One that promotes your health and longevity. Doesn't have to be with us. We're grateful that you joined us here today, but choose health, choose longevity, do it consistently, and you'll see the changes every day. Grateful to be here with you and to serve in this capacity. That's a good.